So here's something uh, disheartening. I have been uh, sick off and on and various varying degrees of sickness for uh, a year. Uh, I mean, all throughout last year, I would have these fevers that would just come up on me and uh, no explanation, no one can figure it out. And all this time I've had a lower gastrointestinal high grade infection and it's taken two rounds. Well, it's what it took was four days in the hospital with intravenous, uh, what do you call it, uh, antibiotics. 16 bags of antibiotics they put in me. And I came home and for a few days I started feeling almost normal. I'm not even talking about my hand. I'm talking about my stomach, lower intestinal, and all the other unpleasant things that go along with having problems down that far. Let's just say that my wife wouldn't ride with me unless uh, I had the outside vent on and a window cracked. Okay? <laughs> it was worse than that, though. I, I couldn't get far from my toilet. I couldn't. If I wanted to do anything like on a Thursday, and then I couldn't eat anything at all Wednesday. And uh, so you get my drift. So anyway, it's been about a year since I've done any real physical activity, labor. And uh, I just got off a round of steroids. And I'm feeling somewhat better. But uh, Bev has a Bradford pear tree and her front yard that is at the end of its life. And it keeps on dropping these huge limbs and they keep on bending her fence. And uh, Bradford pears are just horrible trees. They're pretty to look at, but they're so delicate, they break with the slightest bit of wind and uh, or nothing. They break, you know, in the middle of the night when nothing's going on, they just break and fall down and bend your fence. And so uh, Charlie and I got out there starting at about 9 30 this morning and what time is it i think it's not quite two o'clock so i worked about four hours cutting a really huge i'm talking about 16 inch limb down i had to cut it down first and of course bradford pears i don't care how good a lumberjack you are you cut your wedge and that tree is going to go wherever the hell it wants no matter how precisely you have cut your your aiming wedge i even had a chain and a come along trying to pull it in a direction where it wouldn't land on her fence and uh, i didn't even get halfway through the limb and it fell on her fence so uh we got that picked up and charlie did most of the work i'm sad embarrassed to say I did most of the cutting, and she did most of the picking up and putting in the trailer and carrying down to the fire. And uh, here's the, the sad part, the shocking part. I've always been a strong guy. My arms and, you know, shoulders. And uh, I have a saw that is the biggest non-commercial saw you can get from steel. It's a 390, an MS 390. And uh, if any bigger than that, you're, and you're in the commercial grade, and you're going from, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. So I have a big saw that never was a problem cranking it over. I mean, it took some muscle to crank it over. Even with a compression release, it took some muscle. And uh, I could not start that stupid saw. I did not have enough arm muscle in me and shoulder muscle to pull it hard enough to get it cranked. And uh, I've got a neighbor, not my friend David. He's n only a few years younger than me, so he's an old guy too. Uh, I've got another neighbor, Keith, and uh, he's a, I think he's in his early 40s, maybe uh, mid 40s, and he's a, still a strong young guy. And I may ask him if he can, if he could just get it started for me. After that, I can crank it up. Because, uh, you know, when I put my saws away, I dump the gas out of the can out of the gas tank and then I crank the saw up and I let it run until it's completely out of gas and uh, after that when you go to use them again it takes a whole lot of pulling to get them to crank up you know because it's got to pull gas from the tank and then fill a bowl 
not fiddle, there's no bowl on a carburetor, on a chainsaw carburetor, but you know what I mean. It's got a long way to pull gas up. And uh, anyway, that's uh, shocking, embarrassing, a little bit scary that I've lost that much strength. And then uh, I was trying to pick up these logs that I purposely cut smaller than normal because I suddenly realized that I'm not as strong as I was. And I couldn't pick them stinking logs up and put them in the trailer. That's how how much uh, arm muscle I have lost. So I uh, I hope I still feel pretty good. Uh, I still can't close my hand up more than that. And I used it today. I can't grip the handle on the chainsaw, but I can steady the chainsaw handle. And uh, I tried lifting that log and it didn't pull my fingers open. So I got a little bit of strength in my fingers. I hope this isn't, isn't boring you, but this is just a... Uh, you know, I'm finding out what I can do, and I am feeling a little better. I have some other issues that I got to go have checked out uh, Thursday or Friday, the 9th, whatever the 9th is, at 1.45. And uh, let's just say it involves the bladder, prostate, and all the other various accoutrements that go along with that. And my wife asked me if I wanted her to go, and I said, absolutely not. I do not want an audience. So I got problems there, and I don't know if it's all related to this infection that I've had for uh, a year or more. Off and on, you know, my body would fight it, and I would feel a little bit better, and then I would just get sick again, fevers, and uh, almost to the point of vomiting. Anyway, I think, I feel like I am on the recovering end of this. After a very long year, and uh, I just got to go to, okay, my PSA is high, which means, you know, there might be something wrong with my prostate. And uh, you know how they check. If you're over 50, you know how they check. And uh, anyway, let's, let's just forget I said that. So uh, I've got a project coming up, another project besides this tree we're cutting down. And for me to cut the rest of the tree, I got to get that big chainsaw cranked up because my little chainsaw, my 211C, uh, it's too small to cut that big a tree down. And uh, my Maytag washing machine, today I should have the part I need. Uh, about eight or nine months ago, this is how bad I felt, even eight or nine months ago, the water pump without went out on it. I could not make myself, I was so weak and sick, I could not make myself get up and go drag the washing machine out and take it apart. My wife did. And she got the most of it done, and I was able to get down there on the floor and see what part we needed and get a part number, order the part, and it's the pump, uh, the pump that empties the, the tub and forces the water out of the drain and into the drain. Uh, I had to replace that, and that was only three years old, brand new, you know, for, and it's just two people, we don't dirty a lot of clothes, so it hasn't been used a lot, and it's a really expensive Maytag. And now, it's got another problem, it's not filling up, the, the, it has these, I'll show you when I do the project, but I had to order a special tool, because uh, there's, there's these springs inside this little crack that you got to release in order to take it apart. And uh, I had to order this special tool and it took me forever to find it and it was very expensive. And uh, Maytag wouldn't sell it to me and appliance repair people wouldn't sell it to me. I finally found kind of a black market place to sell me this special tool. And I'll show that to you when I do the project. And uh, let's see. So I should have that. It's basically, it's a bunch of, it's a water valve with solenoids on it. Let me tell you, they have complicated something so simple and made it so unbelievably complicated. I'll show you when I get the new part. It's a mixture of wires and solenoids that open and close and mixing valves. Just ridiculous. And now it's four years old. So we only got four years, three years before the water pump went bad. Four years before this mixing valve went bad. Now it's only 38 bucks, so it's not the end of the world. And the uh, water pump wasn't that expensive either. So it's just the fact that you have to fix these stupid washing machines constantly or buy a new washing machine. Anyway, I've talked enough. Nine, almost ten minutes. So have a good Tuesday, y'all. And uh, 
Wednesday, I may have a video for you fixing that washing machine.